hi uh, my name is ranjit bauri so today uh, we are going to continue on this uh, magnetic particle testing uh, which uh, we have started in the last lecture as uh, part of this uh, lecture series on ndt so before we uh, proceed today uh, let's have a quick uh, relook what we did in the last class so we learned about uh, the basic principle uh, behind uh, this technique and we saw it is primarily the leakage field uh, which uh, comes due to uh, the presence of a discontinuity on a magnetized surface due to that uh, leakage flux or due to that leakage field uh, it creates a small magnet along the discontinuity and then uh, if you apply magnetic particles uh, they will be attracted uh, to this small magnet being created at the discontinuity and that is how it will be made visible uh, by this uh, magnetic particle testing okay so the main factor here or the main the, the basis for this is the uh, magnetic uh, flux leakage at a discontinuity then we uh, talked about uh, different methods of uh, magnetization the first step uh, in this case is to magnetize the surface and there are different methods uh, which are available for uh, magnetizing the part and depending on uh, how you pass the current uh, you can see uh, the magnetic field how it is created and the direction of the magnetic field as I said before uh, can be found by this uh, right hand thumb rule as you could see here ok. So, if uh, on your right hand if the thumb be the direction of the current then uh, the fingers will point towards the direction of the magnetic field ok. So, these are mutually uh, perpendicular to each other as you could see in this case uh, for example, in the first one here ok. So, if you pass a current like this uh, through this part which is being examined. So, the magnetic field will be created in this path. So, these are called uh, circular magnetic field the direction of which is perpendicular to the direction of the current ok. So, this is what we saw and we also saw that uh, the best visibility you have uh, when the field and the discontinuity are perpendicular to each other ok. This uh, does not mean that other orientations uh, will not be visible, they will still be visible, uh, but the strongest indications uh, will be obtained when the discontinuity is uh, perpendicular to the field ok. So, this is what we saw and then uh, we went ahead and saw different methods few methods by which you can magnetize the part and this was the first one uh, using two electrodes and clamping the part in between these two electrodes. So, for clamping the part uh, one of the electrodes uh, is movable and the other one is fixed ok. And then we saw the current requirement also for this kind of uh, magnetization the magnetizing current uh, is in the in this range depending on the size of the part. And then we saw uh, another method uh, which uh, uses uh, this kind of electrodes which are uh, uh, known as uh, prods. So, you can either use a single prod or a, a double prod and in this case again uh, when you pass the current. Uh, uh, through this part along this prod uh, this kind of you know circular magnetic field will be again generated like how you see over here and the defects around this magnetic field uh, will be made visible. So, in this case uh, uh, one thing I should mention here uh, the requirement of the magnetizing current when you are using prods it will depend on uh, the thickness of the part. For example, if the part thickness 
is uh, less than 19 mm okay the current requirement for this case would be uh, 35 to 45 amps per centimeter of broad spacing okay so it depends on the distance between the two legs of the prod. So, it will depend on this distance. So, that means, uh, if you have uh, a 10 centimeter distance for example, then you would need uh, for a part of uh, thickness less than 19 mm, you would need a current in the range of uh, 350 to 450 amps when the spacing between the prod legs is 10 centimeter. And uh, for a part thickness of uh, greater than 19 mm, the current requirement would also increase. So, in that case, it would be 40 to uh, 50 amps per centimeter of. Broad spacing. Okay. So, this is the requirement of the magnetizing current for this particular method. Uh, then we talked about uh, this also if you uh, have a part uh, which is hollow, then uh, in those cases uh, you can uh, take a, a conductor and pass it uh, through the central hole. So, with the help of this uh, central uh, conductor, uh, when you pass the current through it, uh, you can magnetize uh, the part by induction. Okay. Similarly, you can use a coil and uh, insert the part uh, through it. So, in that case also, it will magnetize the part. And in this case, uh, when you are uh, sending the current uh, through this coil, let us say this is the direction of the current as you could see. So, here the uh, magnetic field is not circular, in fact in this case it is longitudinal. So, the cracks uh, which are transverse that is uh, perpendicular to the axis will be uh, having the best visibility and cracks like this uh, which uh, lie along 45 degree uh, they will also have good visibility. Okay. So, when you have a central uh, conductor depending on the size of the part uh, you have to place it. So, if it is a small uh, cylinder like this, then you can uh, place it at the center. Okay. So, this is uh, the cylindrical part that is being examined and uh, this is the central conductor which is uh, carrying the magnetizing current. So, if the part is small you can place the uh, conductor along the center so that you can have a uniform magnetization on the uh, surface of the cylinder. Okay. But if you uh, have a bigger part let us say like this. Okay. So, in that case if you uh, place the conductor along the center, then the magnetizing uh, will not be uh, uniform across the periphery or across the circumference uh, of this part. So, in that case uh, the central uh, conductor is placed in contact uh, with the wall of the part in one, one portion like this. Okay. So, this is uh, the central conductor. So, you have to uh, magnetize a particular portion uh, of the part which is being examined. So, if the diameter of this uh, central uh, conductor, uh, let us say if it is D, then uh, in this case uh, you would be able to uh, cover a distance. Uh, 
along this which will be uh, equal to 4 d 4 times the uh, diameter of the uh, central part. Uh, so, that will be the effective uh, distance of uh, magnetization when you use a central conductor like this at a part uh, uh, which is bigger and the conductor is placed uh, in contact with the wall of the part at a particular location. Okay, so, this is how uh, it will be if you uh, see along uh, the circumference the distance uh, that you can magnetize in this case will be 4 times the diameter of the uh, central conductor. Similarly, uh, when you are using uh, this kind of uh, coil, okay. depending on whether the diameter of this uh, coil is uh, tightly filled by the part or the part diameter is, is uh, much smaller. compared to uh, the diameter of the coil. Then since this is uh, highly filled, okay, this is uh, known as a high fill and in this case you could see the filling of the coil is uh, not that much. So, that is why uh, this is known as low fill. In case of uh, high field, the effective uh, distance of uh, magnetization from the center of the coil is uh, 22 centimeters on either side from the center. Okay. And in this case, uh, the effective distance is r, where in r is the uh, radius of the coil. Okay. So, in case of high fill it is uh, 22 centimeter, the effective uh, distance of magnetization. So, in case of high fill it is uh, 22 centimeter and in case of low fill it is equal to the radius of the coil. Okay. So, this is how uh, it is in case of uh, a coil or a solenoid and then we talked about uh, this also uh, a U shaped uh, electromagnet which is known as a yoke that can also be used uh, to magnetize the part and in this case uh, the direction of the magnetic uh, lines, the magnetic lines of force are across this if you connect uh, these two legs. So, along this line uh, is the direction of the magnetic field. So, that means uh, cracks which are lying like this uh, perpendicular to this field will have the best visibility. Okay. And in this case as I told you could have uh, a hinge also like this that will allow you to uh, move these legs and you would be able to adjust the distance between the legs. So, that you would be able to vary uh, the effective distance of uh, magnetization in this case. So, these are the different methods of uh, magnetizing the part. Okay. So, let us uh, continue on that in this lecture. So, first thing that you do you uh, clean the surface of all dirt, oil, grease and so on and then uh, you magnetize the part. Okay. 
by using one of uh, these methods uh, depending on uh, your requirement and the suitability. So, when you magnetize, we know what are the different methods uh, that is all fine, but when you are magnetizing the part, uh, how do you know uh, what is the level of magnetic field uh, which is optimum or which is good for uh, magnetizing a particular part of given size. Okay? So, if you want to know that, uh, first uh, you need to know little bit about uh, the theory of magnetization. That means, we need to go back and discuss a little bit about uh, the basics of magnetism and then uh, you have to see uh, the magnetic uh, properties of the material which is being tested. Okay? So, if you uh, refresh your uh, memory on the theory of magnetism, let us say you uh, apply a field H in this direction. So, in the part uh, which is being magnetized, uh, it will uh, create a magnetic flux or it will uh, magnetize it. So, if you uh, plot uh, the magnetic flux or the magnetization on this y axis, magnetic flux uh, many times is denoted by B or you can also use magnetization M okay, along this axis. So, as you uh, continue to increase the magnetic field, uh, the magnetic flux uh, in the material would increase okay, like this and finally, it will uh, saturate. Okay. So, that is the uh, saturation magnetization. So, what basically happens here, uh, you may know that uh, in a um, ferromagnetic material, uh, you have uh, what is called as uh, magnetic domains or magnetic uh, dipole moments. So, this uh, in the beginning when you do not apply any field, when the field is 0, these uh, magnetic dipole moments are uh, randomly oriented uh, like this. Okay. And as you uh, continue to increase the magnetic field in a particular direction, then uh, some of the dipole moments which are uh, favorably oriented with uh, respect to the direction of the field will uh, grow in size, let us say this one at the expense of the other one. So, the other ones will uh, reduce. Okay. So, as you continue to increase uh, this direction will uh, continue to grow the favorable direction and it will also tend to align along the uh, direction of the applied field. Okay. So, at this point when you reach this uh, saturation point, uh, all the dipole uh, moments which are favorably oriented along this magnetic field will be now aligned and they also grow in size at the expense of the others and they will be almost aligned to uh, the direction of the magnetic field and that is when uh, you uh, reach uh, magnetic uh, saturation. Okay. Now, uh, if you reverse the field, okay, if you change the direction of the field, if you do field reversal, then it will not uh, while coming back, it will not follow this same curve, rather it will follow a curve like this. Okay. So, now at this point, although your field is 0, okay, but it is still uh, 
having some magnetic flux, it is still having some magnetization. Okay. So, that means it is retaining uh, some of the magnetization which was provided in the beginning and that is why this point is known as uh, remanent. So, if we denote that as R. And then if you uh, continue uh, to reverse the field, then it will finally saturate on the reverse direction also. And now at uh, this point, it is uh, the magnetization is becoming 0. Okay. So, to take it back to uh, the zero magnetization, you have to apply a field in the opposite direction and uh, this particular point, the field H uh, corresponding uh, to the point uh, when the magnetic flux is becoming zero is known as the coercivity. So, again uh, this is a uh, property of the material and now if you uh, increase again on the same direction then this hysteresis loop develops. So, this is the magnetic uh, hysteresis that we all know. Okay. So, now coming back to uh, this as to what should be the level of the magnetic field that you apply. Uh, to magnetize the part. Okay. So, as you could see uh, in any case uh, the applied field has to be greater than the coercive field. Okay. So, it must be greater than the coercive field which is this one. So, that it is the magnetization is not 0, it is uh, it is some positive value, it is more than 0. In most cases a field uh, close to saturation is applied so that when you uh, remove the field uh, you have uh, enough magnetic flux remaining. Okay. So, uh, theoretically this uh, tells you uh, uh, what should be the level of uh, the magnetic field that you apply okay, to magnetize the part. But uh, when you actually do it, uh, this theory is fine because this gives you uh, the idea as to how much you should apply. But when you uh, practically do it and as you apply the field, you do not know uh, what is the exact uh, magnitude of the field which is being applied. Okay. So, that means, uh, during doing it practically, uh, you need a reference okay, or something which would at least indicate if not uh, tells you the exact uh, value of the magnetic field which will at least indicate that the field uh, which is being applied is good enough uh, to magnetize that particular part. Okay. So, that is where these field indicators come into picture. as the name suggests, this will indicate uh, the uh, level of uh, the magnetic field of course, in a qualitative manner whether it is uh, optimum or whether it is enough uh, to magnetize the part or not. Okay. So, there are different types of uh, field indicators uh, depending on uh, what kind of part you have which can be used uh, to uh, indicate uh, the level of the magnetic field being applied. Okay. And uh, one of them is known as uh, Keto's ring. So, 
So, this is uh, basically a ring like this uh, with a hole uh, at the center okay. and then along the periphery you have uh, some smaller holes at uh, different distances uh, from the edge like this. Okay. So, as you go on this uh, distance uh, from the edge uh, increases. Okay. So, you have uh, different holes like this at different uh, distances from the edge and these uh, holes are uh, given numbers like this 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on as the uh, distance from the edge uh, increases this number also increases. Okay. And if you see the typical uh, dimensions of uh, this particular indicator, this is uh, like this. So, the diameter is uh, one twenty five mm, okay, and uh, its uh, thickness uh, is uh, twenty two mm, and this series of folds uh, that you have. the size of the hole, uh, the diameter of the holes is uh, around 1.75 millimeter. Okay. So, this is uh, what you have. Now, uh, what you can do? You can uh, through this uh, central hole Okay. You can uh, put a central conductor and pass the magnetizing current and as you pass the current uh, this will be magnetized. Okay. Now, depending on uh, how many holes are visible or how many holes are being indicated uh, by the magnetic particles. So, you first magnetize this ring and then you apply the magnetic particles and then see uh, how many holes are being indicated by the magnetic particles clearly. Okay. So, it will depend on uh, what is the level of uh, current you are using and what kind of magnetic particles are being used. So, if you uh, see this table for example, uh, which is uh, the magnetizing current which is being applied to magnetize, magnetize the part. And uh, the minimum number of uh, holes indicated by the magnetic particles. So, this magnetic particles can either be used uh, in a uh, suspension uh, in a low viscosity liquid that we will uh, talk about uh, later in little more detail or uh, they can also be applied as dry particles. Okay. So, let us say uh, you are using a black suspension and in that case uh, the number of uh, minimum holes that should be indicated that would depend on uh, what is the uh, magnetizing current. Uh, which is used. So, let us say for this black suspension these are the levels of uh, current. Then for uh, this for each of these uh, currents the minimum number of hole that should be indicated for 1400 amps it should be 3. Then for uh, 2500 amps it should be uh, 5 and then uh, for 3400 amps it should be 6. Okay. So, this is how uh, this Kito's ring uh, would indicate uh, that uh, you know the magnitude of the magnetizing current uh, which is being applied whether it is 
good enough or not. Okay. So, if, if you are applying for example, 1400 amperes and then if you see uh, three holes uh, are clearly indicated when you apply the magnetic particles, then uh, for that particular uh, current, uh, for that particular scenario, this much current is enough. Okay. So, this is how uh, it will be for uh, black suspension and if you use uh, dry powder, for the same level of current, this number should be uh, 4, uh, 6 and 7, little high. Okay. So, this is how uh, depending on uh, uh, what kind of uh, magnetic uh, particles are being used. And how many holes are uh, being indicated by them, uh, the optimum level of the magnetizing current uh, can be found. Okay. So, this is how these Kitto's rings is going to indicate whether uh, the magnetic field or the magnetic uh, or the magnetizing current which is being applied, whether it is optimum or not. So, this is one of the methods, uh, one of the indicators by which uh, you can do it. There are two or three more methods uh, which uh, we are going to discuss little later, but uh, I think uh, we can take that uh, in the next lecture. Because today this is all I have, so I will stop here today. Thank you for your attention and I will see you next time.